Welcome to part 4 of my snuff tutorial for piano. From here on out the song gets a bit more complex with different chords, some tricky fingering patterns and some interesting rhythms. So there's plenty of stuff to work on. As usual I'll aim to slow everything right down to make it easier to learn. Let's go. First of all we'll have the usual recap from last lesson. Now this is where the chorus comes in the song, and we're going to slow things down, starting with the right hand at 40 beats per minute. For the right hand chorus parts, there's a lot of groups of two or three notes played together that might initially stump you, but if you continue to practice them slowly at first, without worrying about the left hand, you'll soon begin to get a feel for these notes and start to make the right shapes automatically with your hand. So muscle memory has a big part to play in learning chord shapes, and it's something that will require practice and patience. Luckily though, the chords in this entire song aren't majorly difficult, uh, not after you get used to them at least, uh, they just might seem a little bit overwhelming at first. But remember that the chorus repeats later in the song, so it's worthwhile getting to grips with it all now. Also, just keep in mind that with the vocal melody, which is what Corey Taylor actually sings, is what most of the notes are here. Uh, there are a few passing notes uh, that just add to the harmony uh, and don't have anything to do with the main melody, but they aren't that common. Uh, so next up, we need to see what the left hand does for the chorus section. Pretty straightforward stuff for the left hand, most of the rhythms involved we've covered already in previous lessons, so there shouldn't be anything to trip you up too much. Just concentrate on hitting the right notes first and then you can go on to the next step, which is putting both hands together nice and slow. What we've discussed before obviously applies here. Work each hand separately first until you're comfortable with it, then piece both together at a slow, steady pace. 
It doesn't matter if you only work, let's say, four beats at a time and then go back and repeat it to work it again. Just work as slow as you need to to get all the notes correct without worrying about speed. Now, of course, once you're familiar with all of that, it's time to play it gradually faster. I'm going to jump right up to 60 BPM now, but only because I've spent a lot of time learning the song. Obviously, don't bump the speed up so quickly. I'd recommend increasing by about 5 or 10 BPM, maybe less. Uh, you know, get comfortable with it and confident at that speed first, and then increase again. Whatever works for you, though. Just a quick note about the metronome click you can hear. Uh, I said something briefly about this in a previous lesson, but just wanted to recap. The click might sound like it's going double time. Uh, we're playing here at 60 BPM and obviously 40 BPM in the slower examples. But I've set the metronome to play 8 beats per measure rather than 4, just so that it helps you better identify where each note should occur. Uh, if you play with only 4, especially at the lower speeds, it can be difficult to get your timing right. Of course, this is just my own preference and you may have your own. But please bear in mind that I would not recommend practicing with a metronome to any of this song when you're first learning it. The reason for that is you need to be able to play at whatever speed feels comfortable, even if it's ridiculously slow, it doesn't matter. Uh, your speed won't be consistent straight away anyway. Uh, so don't worry about speed at all at first, just hit the right notes. The reason I'm using a metronome here is because I think it will help you uh, to hear where each note or chord should occur in the space of those four beats. Well that's the end of another lesson. Uh, as always let me know if you have any questions or need any extra help. My contact info will be in the description as usual. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.